I was honored to stand up here to receive the Pen Peter Benchley Ocean Award for Excellence in Policy. Uh, at that time, uh, it was Senator Sheldon Whitehouse who gave me the award. Uh, that was someone from the Ocean State handing the award to someone from the Bay State. Uh, but increasingly, it's senators that come from states with no coastlines that are understanding the need for us to do something about these issues. Of, and we're joined here tonight by incredible leaders, Senator Tom Udall, Brian Schatz, uh, Mark Begich, Tim Wirth, uh, his wife, Wren, uh, just so many leaders who have dedicated their lives to helping to protect the oceans. And there is no one who understands the connection better than that remarkable man whose job it is literally every day to monitor American interests overseas, which unfortunately is where Secretary John Kerry is tonight. <laughs> and while he is unable to join us to receive this distinguished award because his flight is high above the skies as we speak, we know that John Kerry's heart will always be with our oceans. And we thank you, Under Secretary Kathy Novelli, for being here tonight to accept this award on his behalf. Secretary Kerry truly regrets that he cannot be here this evening and asked me to accept this tremendous honor, the Peter Benchley Ocean Award for Excellence in Policy on his behalf. And he asked me to read the following statement uh, to all of you. Wendy Benchley, David Helvard, Prince Albert, members of the selection committee, friends. Thank you very much for honoring me with the 2015 Peter Benchley Ocean Award. I am deeply sorry that I cannot attend this gathering in person. Instead, I am in an airplane flying over the Pacific. Despite my vantage point on that marvel, I'd rather be with you. Those of you who knew Peter Benchley will understand what I mean when I say that his resume wasn't just an extraordinary list of books, articles, and films. It was also a declaration of principle. His commitment to the preservation of marine life and habitat was personal. It was relentless. It was right. And I commend his wife, Wendy, for carrying this commitment forward. Peter put the case simply. Without the oceans, there would be no life on Earth. The people gathered here tonight don't just share that sentiment. You live it every day in your efforts to educate, advocate, and raise awareness about the need to protect the health, diversity, and richness of our ocean resources. Growing up along the coast of Massachusetts, I developed a powerful connection to the ocean at an early age. My mother came from the sea's merchant stock, and my father was an avid sailor who introduced me to the joys of the ocean at the age of three. I quickly came to love exploring the rocky coves, serene bays, craggy inlets, and open waters just down the road from where we lived. But it wasn't until much later that I discovered how significant the ocean is to humankind. The ocean fuels our trade. It provides much of the food we eat and refreshes the air we breathe and it is home to vast, magnificent ecosystems from the coral reefs to the kelp forests. When I convened the State Department's first conference focused on the challenge we now confront, we deliberately called it the Our Ocean Conference to underscore that waters that may have different names around the world are really one and the same, and that there are no borders to the challenges they face. I don't need to remind any of you that unsustainable fishing, pollution, and climate change are threatening this incredible resource like never before. Addressing all of these challenges won't be easy, but the good news is that we know what kinds of steps we need to take if we want to honor our responsibility to leave behind a healthy and vibrant ocean for future generations. We need to fish in sustainable ways. We need to stop treating the oceans like a dump. We need to set aside marine areas of special ecological value. We need to protect marine mammals. 
We need to manage the many uses of the sea with the welfare of the sea foremost in mind. And we need to mobilize not just presidents and prime ministers, but mayors and governors and scientists and business people and students and retirees and everyone else we can find to demand urgent global action to curb the greenhouse gas emissions that cause climate change. My friends, protecting our ocean isn't just an environmental issue. It's an economic issue. It's a global health issue. It is a food security issue. It's a profound moral responsibility. Above all, it's a test we must meet together Given the leadership and talent of those gathered here tonight, I have every confidence that we will succeed. Thank you once again for your generosity to me and for your commitment to the ocean on which we all depend. Sincerely, Secretary John Kerry. <laughs>